you're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam present Beaverdam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight it's another showdown in the always tough Badger Large Conference. The Oregon Panthers are in town to take on your Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house. I'm joined on site by Aiden Voigt. He's my videographer and engineer. And Jack Wilski is back at the 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Studios engineering our radio simulcast. Tonight's game is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, and White Construction. Welcome into the pregame show, everyone. Glad to have you with us on this Thursday night. The uh, calm before the storm, as it were, as the two teams are on the court right now getting their warm-ups underway. And this should be a fun one tonight as Beaver Dam and Oregon get set to do battle. Beaver Dam is 9-3 overall on the year. Golden Beaver is currently at 4-2 in Badger Large Conference play. Meanwhile, Oregon at 7-4 on the season, and they are 3-2 in the Badger Large. These two teams haven't played in a while. Uh, they have not played each other since December 3rd of 2019. And on that night, Oregon beat Beaver Dam by 10, 73-63. But, yeah, they haven't played... They've been in opposite divisions of the Badger Conference the last few years, and because of the way the conference scheduling and the formats were done, uh, these two teams did not meet. But tonight they will, and this is a huge, huge game for both clubs. As I mentioned, both teams have two losses in conference play. One, a key, sits atop the league right now with a 5-1 and one Badger large record, and then you have a log jam of teams below them that all have two losses in conference, Monona Grove, Beaver Dam, Milton, and Oregon. So, you know, if either of these teams has any inkling of a conference title, they need to win this game tonight. This is this is really, really big for both sides. Beaver Dam with an impressive win in their last outing. That was on Saturday, this past Saturday, when they beat Manitowoc Lincoln here at home, 70-61. to that was a, a nice non-conference win for the Golden Beavers, a 50-point second half for Beaver Dam. They were led in the game by E.J. Salatel. He had 20 points. Parker Stoby, 17. J.T. Call had a dozen to lead the way as Beaver Dam ended up breaking a two-game losing streak with that win on Saturday. Meanwhile, Oregon, their last game was on Saturday. They lost in a non-conference affair at Sussex-Hamilton, 65-61. Now, prior to that, uh, the Panthers were on fire. They had won five in a row and seven out of eight. So right now they come in, despite that loss on Saturday, playing some pretty good basketball, and they are led by a gentleman you're going to hear a lot of tonight, Vaughn Carvala. He's just a sophomore, six feet, six inches tall. This kid's a lot of fun. I can't wait to watch him. He averages almost 25 points a game. And he's a high flyer. He likes to play above the rim when he can. In fact, I was told he's averaging two to three dunks per ball game. So you're going to hear that name a lot tonight. He's going to be job one defensively for the Golden Beavers. Also for the uh, Panthers tonight, names you'll hear, Caden Diaz averaging 9.1 a game. Diaz, I believe, was out of the lineup uh, briefly, but he has come back and... Uh, I was talking with uh, head coach Chris Siebert of Oregon, and he said uh, he's been a, it's been nice to get him back because it's really helped the offense a lot. I mean, yeah, you have Carvala, but uh, that's really a nice compliment to uh, Mr. Carvala having Diaz back in the lineup. Chris Siebert, of course, in his sixth season 
as the head coach of Oregon. Tim Ladron in his 16th year as the bench boss of the Golden Beavers. Beaver Dam, as I mentioned, they've been playing well pretty much all season. They're getting a really good balanced attack offensively. Different guys stepping up on different nights. Uh, I mentioned uh, guys like uh, E.J. Salatel and J.T. Call, both averaging about 16 points a game. Parker Blank averaging 10, but but it's the guys around them too. A lot of these guys around them understanding their roles and chipping in. And, uh, you know, a 9-3 and three record at the halfway point, that's nothing to sneeze at. Right now, though, we're going to step aside as we continue our pregame programming here inside the Fieldhouse. We'll take a break. When we come back, you'll hear comments from Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. Let's take a two-minute break. We're back in two minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson standing by with Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. Tim, here we are right about the halfway point of the season. You come into this one tonight at 9-3. and three. As you look back at the first half of the season, what are you most pleased with from the guys? Well, I th- one, it's our it's our work ethic. Um, you know, our practice in general, you know, for over the years have been pretty good. This has been as competitive, as intense of practices that we've had consistently for a long time. It is every practice is very intense. Um, there's a high level of competition there, um, and and I think that's made us better. And so. That piece, and then our consistency. We've been pretty consistent all year. I mean, we've you know, we've had a couple bumps in the road on the offensive end a little bit uh, here lately, but um, I've been you know really really happy with it. And I think the last thing before I forget about is, is our leadership. Uh, Jack Cameron and JT have been outstanding leaders, and it really shows in the way, in our locker room and the way the guys play. You know, I don't think we've talked about this a lot. I know I've mentioned to you this at some point, but uh, the thing that I, I take away when I look at this team is that um, they don't get too high or too low. They're, they're pretty consistent across the board with emotions. And the fact that uh, there don't seem to be, you know, any egos. It's a really unselfish type of group. Yeah, I think we get a little jacked up early. I think we've, we've struggled offensively early. We've looked at our numbers, and our, our first half numbers are not nearly what our second half numbers are. Um, and, and I think we're kind of a little fired up early on. And it's so, so we get a little juiced up on the offensive end. So we're trying to control that a little bit, but yeah, I mean, you know, again, the, the, I think that pretty much level headedness after that, 
um, has led to our consistency. And, um, you know, when, when you have those types of things and then with, you, with the leadership that we have, um, everybody kind of follows those three guys. And they've done a really good job of not just vocally, but, um, you know, on the floor, off the floor, the way they act and what they're doing has been really impressive. You know, on the backside of those questions, what area or areas do you want to clean up heading down the stretch? Well, there's always, there's always something, right? Um, you know, the offensive end, we've got to just get a little bit more consistent. But, but I'm really, really happy with our scoring depth. You've seen six guys at different nights lead us, and that's a big deal. You know, there's not many teams that can say that. So that's been really good, just that matter of, of consistently knocking down shots. And, and when, you're, when you shoot a lot of threes like we do because of our size, that sometimes becomes an issue. But we've also been able to get to the basket better than we have in, in recent years because of that space. And – uh, we've gotten a line better. Um, defensively, you know, I, I think we've done a really good job. And we've been better on the boards this year than we have the last couple of years. But it was certainly, you know, w- with our lack of size, that can always get a little bit better. And I think that that's certainly something down the road that we can get better at. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've had at least four guys this year, four different guys with double-doubles. Yeah, yeah, we have. Parker Stoby nearly nearly triple-doubled on Saturday. He had, I think it was 17 points, 11 rebounds, and six assists. And you think of Parker, he's – you know, five eight standing on a ladder. You know, he's just not a very big guy, but he his heart is huge. And yeah, I mean, I knew he had a lot of rebounds, but wasn't quite sure until you know we did the stats the next day. But uh, yeah, we've you know we've got a lot of guys pitching in, and and that's that's always a big part of it. Um, and I think our guys have done a good job. You know, it's not just the JTs and the EJs and the Parkers. As you mentioned, it's it's all these other guys understanding their roles. And I think it was really evident to me in the last game, uh, where you and I talked after the game about Jeff Freund and yeah. what he did. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. But it's guys that really seem to understand what their role is. Yeah, I think a couple guys stand out. I think one, Jack Chen stands out to me as a guy who's, who's – Maybe playing a little bit different role this year. He's defending some bigger guys, and, and you've done a, we've you know he's got a tough assignment tonight, and um, you know and he's kind of had to take a little bit of step back offensively, um, but it's not because he's not capable of it. You know he's certainly very capable of it, and he's shown it at times this year. Uh, but yeah, Jeffrey and Jeffrey had some big minutes for us. He's really coming along, and I was really proud of him the other night. I think our bench on Sunday or Saturday was really good. I think. Um, Jeffrey, Jackson, and Max all gave us really good minutes. Um, you know, I don't consider Parker Blank a, a guy off the bench. You know, he's, I right, right. figure him as a six starter. But I think if we continue to get that kind of depth, I think that'll help us. You know, we put 50 points up on the board in the second half. And I think just that extra minute or two for some of those guys, I think maybe helped us a little bit there. Tough conference game tonight. Oregon, give me a scouting report. Uh, really good. Uh, really athletic. Really long. Um, you know, Carvalho is a sophomore kid. It can just... Uh, you know, watch it. He's got to be averaging three dunks a game. I mean, he's just a high flyer, and he can shoot the three. Um, he, he's an exciting kid to watch. Um, he's six six uh, kid that could play a lot of point for him. Uh, they got a, another six three kid that can shoot it, and they got some other really role players, a couple shooters in that role player group, and a couple kids that really understand how to play. I they got off to a little bit of a slow start. They're really rolling right now. Um, they're a really really good team. I think. You know, coming into the year, I thought they were one of the favorites in the conference, and, and they're playing like it right now. I'm looking forward to it. Tim, good luck to you and the boys tonight. Thanks for your time. Do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside. Back for more right after this on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. Okay, let's go with uh, two more minutes. Two minutes here. Thank you. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Cheer! Now, cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. 
So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you are in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. The Beaverdam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for the active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam better together. Mike Tronson back inside the field house, getting you ready for this Badger Large boys basketball game between Beaverdam and Oregon. But first we'll pause it here as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem performed by the Beaverdam High School Pep Band under the direction of Colin Galitz. Beaverdam High School pep band with our national anthem. Let's give you the starting lineups. First for the Oregon Panthers, and they're coached by Chris Siebert. They'll start Henry Kreckman, a six foot, six inch senior. Caden Diaz, a senior at six feet, three inches tall. Grant Wolink, six three senior. Nolan Erferth, a six one sophomore. And rounding out the starting five for the Panthers, Vaughn Carvala, six foot, six inch sophomore. So again, for the Panthers, it's Henry Kreckman, Caden Diaz, Grant Wolink, Nolan Erferth, and Vaughn Carvala. Panthers tonight in black jerseys and shorts with orange numbers and trim. Meanwhile, the starters for Beaver Dam, coached by Tim Ladrin. The guards are E.J. Salatel, six foot two inch sophomore, along with J.T. Call, a six one senior, and Parker Stoby, five foot nine inch junior. Forwards include Jack Jens, a six three senior, along with Cameron Mendoza, a six three senior. So again, for Beaver Dam, it's E.J. Salatel, J.T. Call, Parker Stoby, Jack Jens, and Cameron Mendoza. Beaver Dam in white jerseys and shorts tonight with green numbers and green and gold trim. For those of you listening on the radio simulcast that can't see it, in the first half, Beaver Dam goes right to left, and that means Oregon will go left to right across your radio dial. 
Don't forget, you can send me an email during the broadcast, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. You know the drill. I'll be happy to give you a shout-out during our broadcast night. And by the way, put basketball in the subject line so I know it's you. And I did get an email from my sister. She says, where do snowmen do their online shopping? The winter net. Good luck, Beavers, and stay safe out there. Thanks, Lori. It's my sister Lori checking in from the Twin Cities tonight up in Minnesota. We'd love to hear from you no matter where you are. All right. Get ready to get this game underway, and it's going to be Henry Kreckman to jump at its center for Oregon, and Cameron Mendoza will do the honors for the Golden Beavers. Glad you're with us. There's the whistle, and we're ready for basketball. Ball's up in the air, tap controlled by Oregon, and this game is underway. And a backdoor pass and a wide open layup for Nolan Erferth. And just like that, it's 2-0 Panthers. Wow. Somebody left the back door open. They found him down there on the left doorstep for an easy two. 18 seconds in. Beaver Dan with its first offensive possession. Trailing 2-0 early. This is Mendoza up top. Leaving it off for Stoby. He'll try a three ball. It is good. Parker Stoby knocking down a triple. 3-2, Beaver Dam leads by one. And we are now 35 seconds into the ball game. Man-to-man defense, Beaver Dam. Here's a head and shoulder faking a shot. Is up and in for Vaughn Carvala, averaging 24.3 a game. And he gives his team a 4-3 lead. 50 seconds gone here in the opening stanza. And a deep three on the way for Salatel. It's off the back rim, no good. Rebound pulled down by Woolink. Throws it ahead in transition. And there's Carvalho, one-handed pass to Kreckman. Double teamed in the block, kicks it out. Three balls on the way, and it's good. Erferth. Erferth now with five points in the game, including that triple. Came into this game average only about three, four a game. He's already got five, and we're not even two minutes in. Here is a pass out to Jack Jens. Gives it to Salatel right side to the free throw line area. Now back to Jens in three-point land, up to Mendoza, top of the bubble. Man defense here for Oregon. Salatel on the left side. One hands it back to Mendoza. Quick touch pass. Jens on the left side goes into the lane, fakes the shot, and then sends it to Mendoza over on the right wing now. Taken there by Salatel. Sidesteps the defender. Pops the three ball. It's off the rim. No. And the rebound for Kreckman. Panthers with a 7-3 lead. We are a minute and 55 seconds into the contest. Step back three, it's no good for Carvala. And the rebound for JT Call as he brings it ahead. Call takes a return feed from Salatel. Right side, down low, in for the layup. Nobody got fouled. JT Call with an all expenses paid trip to the free throw line. 15.52 to go here in the first half. And the foul was on Erferth. That's just his first and the team's first. First free throws on the way, and it's no good for JT Call. JT's averaging 16.3 a game, 76.2% from the free throw line. Six rebounds, four assists per game for JT in his senior season. In and out, no good, missed that one. And another rebound for Oregon as Kreckman will trot across the timeline. Fires it left side for Caden Diaz. Diaz to the free throw line, almost lost it, picked it back up. Now a little lob pass. Out to Carvala. Here's Carvala looking right side for Erferth. Cross court feed into the lane. Carvala jump shot inside the free throw line. High off the rim and it drops through. Carvala's got four. The lead is up to six, nine to three. Oregon leads Beaver Dam, 15 20 to go in the first half. Clock is running. This is Salatel. Over to Jens. Jens high on the left, giving it to Stoby to the free throw line, kicks it out. Mendoza in three-point lane, underhands it, called deep three from the parking lot. It's no good, and the rebound that time for Wolink. So Oregon with a six-point advantage. They've got the Rock looking to add to that lead on this possession. Diaz pass into the post to a cutting teammate. Count the bucket and a foul. Wolink took the pass. It's the hoop and the harm, and he's got a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Grant Wolink averaging 6.4 a game this season, 55.6% from the free throw line. Five rebounds and three assists per game for him. The foul was on JT Call, his first, and team fouls are now even at one apiece. 
And the free throw is up, and it is good. So Wolling completes the three-point play. And it's 12-3 in favor of Oregon. 14-47 and counting left in the first half. Not the start you wanted if you're Beaver Dam. If you're Oregon, you're liking this. On the road against a good team, and you got a nine-point advantage early. Here's a drive blocked from behind by Carvala. As Parker Blank had just checked in, he was going in for a layup and got swatted away from behind. Here's Kreckman. Had it knocked out of his hand, saved in the left corner, and a three ball is up for Carvala. And a timeout, Beaver Dam with 14.20 to go in the first half. It is 15-3, Oregon on top. And Tim Labrin wants to talk things over as... Carvala buries that three, and it's a 12-point advantage for the visitors from Oregon. Again, feel free to send us an email tonight, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name and your, who you're cheering for, where you're from. You know the drill. Put basketball in the subject line. There is a hockey game tonight. I'm sharing the email box with Wade Bates over at the uh, Family Center across the street. He's broadcasting the Beaverdam boys hockey game tonight. That's on the other Daily Dodge TV video stream. We're glad you're with us here on the basketball stream. And how about this start for Oregon? 15 to three lead, Beaverdam with the ball off the timeout, moving right to left. Cameron Mendoza giving it to Stobie, back to Salatel, free throw line extended. Jumpers on the way, air ball, Carvala got the rebound out of midair. Brings it ahead, Carvala, hesitation move. And had bobbled it momentarily, got it to Diaz left corner, and Diaz traveled as he took off towards the basket. That turnover will give it to uh, the Golden Beavers. I mentioned Parker Blank had uh, checked in a little while ago. Blank is a 5'11 sophomore. Stobie will bring it ahead. And Mendoza. Giving it now to JT Call. Here's Stoby again off a screen. Down low on the left side. Swatted out from behind. This time by Caden Diaz. Beaver Dam will keep possession. 13.38 to go in the first half. Beaver Dam looking to climb back into this one. Down 12 early. Jack Jens thought about a three. Didn't take it. Now giving it to... Stoby, nice give and go with Jens. Jens in, might have been partially blocked, and the loose ball picked up by the Panthers. Here's Carvala, hesitation move, going right base and spins into the lane, lost the ball, and it went out of bounds. It was last touch, they say, by Oregon. So that's a break for the Golden Beavers as we have a substitute in for the Panthers, Ryan Dins, a six foot, one inch junior. Hey, the Eberleys are watching basketball tonight. Just got a message from them. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys are having a good night and stay safe in that storm tomorrow. And a three ball, no good for call. Knocked out of bounds is the rebound, and Beaver Dam's going to keep possession. Well, there's no school tomorrow, so we know that. That was canceled. I saw Superintendent Mark to seven. There's a steal off the inbounds play. Dins going in for a lap, beat the defense back, and Ryan Dins. Makes it 17-3. to three. Go, uh, The Golden Beavers now trailing by 14. But, yeah, I saw Mark DiStefano, and uh, as I was coming in about 5.30 tonight, he said, yeah, we're, uh, we're canceling school. No surprise. As Beaver Dam turns it over, Blank was, he stepped on the baseline. Turned it over. So Dins will inbound. And uh, Beaver Dam just all out of sorts right now as they are trailing 17-3 to three on their home floor. Well, we mentioned this Oregon team's been playing pretty good as of late, and they're showing it right here. This is Diaz. Goes back up to Carvel behind the left. Jens is guarding him. Kreckman set a screen. They go cross court. Diaz into the right block. There's Kreckman. Double team. Up and under, and he got fouled on his way up. Henry Kreckman, 6'6 six, six senior. Goes to the charity stripe. Foul on Blank, his first and the team's second. And Kreckman's going to shoot a pair. First one is no good. Kreckman averaging about eight points a game this year. Right around 50% from the free throw line. 
Eight rebounds, four assists per game for Henry Kreckman. Second free throw, no good. In and out, rebound for Stoby. Throws it ahead, long pass to Blank in the right corner. Back up to Jens. Jens going to the baseline. Ran into traffic. That's Diaz there. Gives it back to Blank underneath the basket. Whips it out. Pass was tipped, but saved by Stoby. Now he sends it back to Mendoza, top of the bubble. Out on the left wing, there's Stoby again. Mendoza sets the screen. Stoby inside the free throw line. Lob pass out to the right side. There's Blank, and now Mendoza. 12 minutes to go, first half. We're about six minutes in. Beaverdam down 17 to 3. Here's a three ball from the corner. Blank missed it short, and the rebound for Dins. Ahead, outlet pass corralled by Diaz. He'll pop a three. It's off the rim. No, and the defensive rebound for Mendoza. 11.40 to go until intermission. It's been all Oregon to this point. Beaverdam just the one field goal, a three-pointer by Parker Stoby. There's a pass to a cutting blank, and he's blocked by Carvala. Back the other way, Carvala. Look out as Stoby was trying to impede his progress, knocked the ball loose, and got body. Well, you know, and I talked a little bit with uh, Tim Ladrin before the game, and he mentioned it. You know, he says this is a, a tough matchup for us because you know Oregon's got some size, they've got some length, and Beaver Dam, you know, is is typically over the last you know so many years has been a little undersized when it comes to that department. As a three ball is no good, and the rebound for the Golden Beavers. Well, we've seen a couple of blocks already, and some shots altered because of the wingspans of some of these Oregon players. Salatel in the lane, kicks it out right side. Jeff Freund is out there. He just checked in a moment ago. Jeff Freund, a 6'1 junior, had a big game against Manitowoc Lincoln on Saturday. Excellent effort on Saturday in that non-conference win. Mendoza, head and shoulder fake, puts a shot up. He got the defender in the air with the, the old head and shoulder fake, and that's a big bucket as it's now 17-5. to that ends a 15-0 run for Oregon. So we had a whistle and a foul. Let's see, uh, Jeff Roind picked up that foul, his first, team's fourth. And Wolink sends it to the left corner. With it down there was Erferth. Giving it now to Carvala, sends it up to Erfurth. That actually was knocked away from Erfurth and out of bounds. Boy, what a dive and a hustle by Parker Blank. Now Oregon will keep possession. They'll inbound on the far sideline, right in front of the scorer's table. Also on the floor for uh, Oregon, he checked in a moment ago, Mason Hoffer, six-foot sophomore. Another whistle as I looked back up. And Parker Blank just picked up his second personal. So Erferth will inbound. And they just turned it over. Speaking of Jeff Freund, go Beavers. This email says, go Beavers. Jeff Freund's grandparents are watching from Mount Calvary tonight. Thank you very much for the email. Glad to hear from you. Keep them coming, folks. Sports at DailyDodge.com. Love to hear from you tonight. We'll give you a shout out as always. All right, Beaver Dam down 17 to five, and now a whistle. We had some extracurricular act activity away from the basketball. Foul on Oregon. Let's check this one out. Nolan Erferth picked it up. That's his second, and just the second team foul. Erferth's going to have to come out with his second foul, checking in to replace him. Nicholas Jacob. Sophomore, he's a six-footer. And as the ball was being inbounded, another whistle and another foul on the Panthers. Let's check this one out. Now Jacob, he just checked in and he got a foul right away. His first team's third. Mendoza catches the inbounds pass, gives it to Freund. Freund's up top, now sends it right side. High on the right call, back the other way for Stoby. Stoby on the near wing, spinning towards the lane, kicks it out, Freund in three-point land as he's guarded there by Dins. Works at baseline, bounce pass to the corner. Down there is JT Call, fires it up top. Mendoza around the horn, Salatel gives it right back to Cameron. 
Now off a screen, a three, and it's no good for Stobie. Carvala leaping to get that rebound for the Panthers. Nine and a half minutes and counting left until the break, 17 to five, and Carvala got stripped. Call's gonna go back in the other end, and he lets Travis go by, then feeds a cutting. Salatel, who was trailing the play, and Salatel floats one up and in, 17 to seven. So Beaver Dam, despite the struggles, within 10, and we're not quite to the halfway point of this opening stanza. Mike Tronson here at the Fieldhouse tonight. Aiden Voigt is my videographer and engineer as the ball. Aaron passed into the backcourt. Salatel picks it up, and it's a turnover. Beaver Dam gets it. And here is Mendoza, top of the key for three. Off the rim, no. And a defensive rebound for Carvalho. I think they're going to get Freund for a foul going for that loose ball. But uh, Aiden's here tonight, uh, or should I call him Agent Double A Voigt? I hear that's your new nickname. I like it, by the way. And uh, and Jack Wilski is here. Well, she's actually at the 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Studios, which are a couple of blocks away. And uh, Jack, thanks for uh, all you do. Great work, as always. 8.47 to go in the first half, Oregon with the ball in a 10-point lead, 17-7. to seven. There's a shot high off the glass, it won't go. Diaz got his own rebound, put back is good. Caden Diaz. He got his first bucket of the night, 19-7. to seven. Panthers now with a 12-point lead. Jens, top of the bubble. Gives it to Stoby. Stoby off the screen to the left corner. Freund tries the three ball. Money! Jeffrey Freund from downtown Beaver Dam. That's a badly needed three for the Golden Beavers. 19 to 10. So the deficit down to single digits and a pass intercepted. JT Call bobbled on his way in and he was fouled on his way up. Oh my goodness. He was he started to lose his grip as he was going to go up with it. And he got fouled. I believe this is Wolink. Yeah. Grant Wolink picked up the foul, his first, team's fourth. And JT's going to go to the line and try and cut into this deficit a little bit more. First free throw in and out. No good. JT, he's a decent free throw shooter. 76% on the year, but that one would not go. He'll try it again. Second attempt is good. That's his first point of the evening. 19-11. to 11. So Beaver Dam within eight. Eight minutes to go until they blow the Horn and Carvala pass to the baseline. Kicked out of there. Up to the top of the key. That is Jacob. Nicholas Jacob on the dribble. And now bounce pass to Wolink. Over on the left side, Carvala. He'll try a step back three. It's high off the rim. No. And an offensive rebound for Ryan Dins. Reload here for the Panthers. Dins in the corner. Left side. Three ball. No good. It's short. Rebound knocked around. Grabbed in the lane by Freund. He'll bring it ahead. As he crossed the timeline, sends it left corner. Jen's ball fake. He's going to drive baseline. Layup off the glass is good for J squared. Jack Jens makes it 19-13. And just like that, Beaver Dam's back within six. Pass into the right block. Carvala missed the shot. Freund was there defensively to alter it a little bit. Now at the other end, call. And he was fouled as he was trying to go through traffic on the interstate. Stops the clock with 7-12. Left to go in this first half. He's going to get some personnel set here as we had a sub, sub come in. Beaver Dam's going to inbound on the baseline to our left. Lob pass in, Mendoza corrals it, giving it to Jens, top of the silo, back to call. Long three for call, and it's high off the rim, no good. And we had a foul, but let's see, I think it's on Oregon as that carom came all the way back towards the free throw line, and it is. Check this one out. Okay, Nicholas Jacob picked up the foul for Oregon, his second. Team fouls are now even at six apiece. Calls inbounds feed from the baseline is caught by Stovey. Back to the right corner. Call. Kicks it up to EJ Salatel out of Mendoza, just inside the free throw line. Picks up the dribble. Looking for help, underhanded flip back to Salatel. 15 footers on the way, off the back rim, no. Offensive board, Mendoza, put back, won't go. Swats the rebound, Stoby out to call for three, yes! JT call, the triple, and the offensive rebound and the great passing set it up. We've got a one possession game, 19 to 16. Beaverdam is back 
within three, six and a half to go until intermission. And this is Carvala for three. It's off the back rim, no good, and actually hit the mechanism up top. That is out of bounds, and Beaver Dam will get it back. And we've got a timeout called by Oregon with 6.21 to go first half. It's 19-16, Panthers on top of the Golden Beavers. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 14.30 ESPN. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. to go first half, off the timeout. Beaver Dam will bring it up the floor, now within three. They were down double digits a little while ago. They've cut it to three. And this is JT Call, up high on the right, into the lane, kicks it out. Jens on the wing for three, got it! Jack Jens, a triple, and we are tied at 19 apiece with just under six minutes to go in the half. Now it's a game of runs, isn't it? Here's a three ball. It is no good for Diaz. Carvalho leaps to get the rebound. And coming down a little awkwardly, but it looks like he'll be okay. What do we got here? Foul. I just want to see who they're pointing at. Carvalho is going to the free throw line. Foul is on Salatel, his first in the team's seventh. This email says, keep fighting, boys. Uncle Brad and Aunt Maggie cheering on JT and the gang from Nina. Says, we love your live stream. Thanks for doing a great job. You are very welcome, and thank you, as the first free throw is good for Carvala. Speaking of Nina, I'm going to be in Nina, weather permitting, next Tuesday for the Beaver Dam girls game, Tuesday night. And the second free throw is no good. Rebound for call. Got another message here from, I'm trying to read it. There we go. I'm, I'm enlarging it off of Aiden's phone. I'll get to it in a second here. This is a drive, call, layup with the right hand, book it. And call gives the Golden Beavers a 21 to 20 lead. This is Carvala. Oh, and the two-handed flush as he got through the double team. Carvala with authority, 22-21. I told you he likes to play above the rim. And he showed it right there. Here is Call and an underhanded floater. He scores. My goodness, this is a this is a high octane stuff. 23-22. Beaver Dam back in front by one and a travel on Oregon. By the way, this uh, message uh, is from Bob, and it says, "I love when Oregon plays in Beaver Dam, so I can listen to the best commentator in the business." Oh my goodness, Bob, thank you very much. I tell you what, that's very kind of you to say. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in and hope you're enjoying this broadcast once again tonight. Been a good one thus far. Oregon with a big lead early. Beaver Dam right back into it with a run of their own. Here's Salatel, step back, shot no good from inside the free throw line. Rebound is pulled down that time by Woolink. And now it is Kreckman leaving it off for Diaz. One hands it right side. Back up top of the key and a three ball. It is off the rim, no good for Kreckman. Defensive rebound was grabbed by Call. By the way, I think I missed it earlier. Carson Hanneman, six foot junior, had checked in a little while ago for Oregon. Wanted to mention him on the floor. 
And we had a whistle as a foul called on the Panthers. Four minutes, 19 seconds left to go first half of this Badger Large Conference tilt, 23-22. Beaver Dam leading Hanneman picked up the foul and the first free throw is up and it is good for Parker Stoby. He's a 75% free throw shooter, averages about seven a game. He had 17 in the win over Manitowoc last Saturday. And next free throw is good for Stoby. 25-22, still a one possession game, but now Beaverdam is up three with four minutes and change to go in the first half. Here is Kreckman. Pass to a cutting teammate and reverse layup is no good for Wolling. Everything but the finish and the rebound for Beaverdam is Stoby flies down the court. Turns on the afterburners and goes in for two more. 27-22. The Beaverdam lead is at five. Here's Kreckman. Left side going baseline. High off the glass. That shot won't go in the rebound for Mendoza. Here come the Golden Beavers. Stoby pushes it right side. Here's a baseline drive. Carvala guarding call. Sends it up to Mendoza. Back to Jens. He's into the lane. Jens threw a double team. Blocked from behind. Got the ball back. Kicks it out to Stoby for three. Yes! Parker Stoby. Another three, his second of the game. He's got 10 points, and the lead is now eight for the Golden Beavers. Here's a three at the other end, short from the left corner for Hanneman. Call has it, he'll bring it across the midcourt stripe, fires it to Stoby. Sidearm pass over to Jens, right of the circle. Jens, pass was tipped, saved by Salatel on the baseline, one hands it back up to J squared. Jens around the horn, left side, here's Call for three, it's off the rim. No, and Hanneman leaps to get the defensive board. Trying to spring Carvala. Carvala trying to sidestep the defender. Wait a minute before the shot. Foul on the floor. It's going to stop things here. With 2.55 left to go in this first half. The foul was on Carvala. I beg your pardon, the foul was on Mendoza. Carvala is the free throw shooter as he makes the first. They both wear 24. (laughs) As the next one's on the way, that's good. I got Carvala for 11 points already, 30 to 24. So the Beaver Dam lead is at six. Getting late here in the first half. Been an entertaining game. As I mentioned, a game of runs. Beaver Dam was down... Double digits early. Now they've got a six-point lead. Call, underhand shot. Carvala with a monstrous rejection. Call hit the deck. Ball's out of bounds. Beaverdam's going to keep it, and Call pops right back up. Whew, nothing cheap about that. As he swatted that one away. 2.36 left in the half. Mendoza takes the inbound speed. Jens around the horn, left side for Call. Call guarded by Vaughn Carvala. Now here's Salatel. Giving it to Jens, high on the right. He's worked on by Kreckman. Pass to call, out to the right side. Stoby for three, off the rim, no good. And leaping for the rebound, Wolang. Throws it ahead to Kreckman. Kreckman through traffic. Bounce pass on the baseline. And that pass is sent by Hoffer to Diaz, and now up top again. Here's Kreckman, near the top of the silo. He's going to drive towards the right block. One-handed hook shot. No. Rebound for Mendoza. 155 and counting left in the opening half. Six-point Beaverdam lead. They've got the rock. Here's a screen set by Mendoza. Stoby will take a jumper free throw line extended. Missed it. And the rebound for Kreckman. Henry Kreckman with a bounce pass to Caden Diaz. Diaz picked up by Call. One hands it right side. Hoffer. Towards the block, lost it. Mendoza got the steal, throws it ahead. Two on one developing, but now Call lets traffic catch up and find Stoby. Back to Call, left corner, wide open three. Jack Jens, bullseye. Another triple for J squared. 33 24. Beaverdam leading by nine. 70 seconds left in the half. This is Diaz working the right elbow. In the block, double team, lob pass back out. Carvala has it. Carvala. Sends it left side. Hoffer, bounce pass. Wolink sends it up top for Kreckman. And now gives it 
They go to Diaz, actually, working it down to Carvalho, right baseline. Triple team down there, kicks it out. Diaz will try a three. It's off the rim, no. Rebound, Mendoza has it. 37 seconds left in the half. Beaver down with the ball, up nine. Yeah, let's see if they hold for the last shot here. I mean, you've got a nine-point lead, and it looks like that's what they want to do here. They're going to maybe just spread it out a little bit and hold for the last shot, and then, you know, at, at worst, you, you go into the locker room up nine. As the ball was knocked out of the hands of Stoby by Hoffer. He was trying to poke it loose, and he actually is called for a foul, which will be his first, team's eighth. And Beaverdam, as I mentioned, they're in the bonus right now, so Stoby will head to the free throw line to shoot one plus one, 17.6 seconds left in the first half. And the front end of the bonus is good. Parker Stoby now with 11 points. And he'll get one more. It's 34-24, so a 10-point advantage for the Golden Beavers. Stoby's second free throw is short off the front of the rim. And rebound for the Panthers, Kreckman grabs it, brings it back. 12 seconds left in the half. Kreckman to Diaz. Diaz back to Kreckman, left corner, guarded by Mendoza. Seven seconds. Pass grabbed by Carbola, who went in for a layup. And that'll pretty much do it as a three-quarter court shot by Stoby. Rimmed out. Oh, my goodness. That would have, this place would have erupted had that dropped through. But as it is, we've got an eight-point game at the break. Halftime here inside the field house, and our score is Beaverdam 34 Oregon, 26. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up after this. We'll take a three-minute break. Back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV. Three minutes. 1430 ESPN, Beaver Dam, and Daily Dodge TV. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Knightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Knightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. There's something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends. And if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. 
Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning And once again, tonight's game here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaver Dam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, and White Construction. The Beaver Dam Unified School District is one of the largest employers in the region. Their compensation and benefit packages are among the most competitive in the area. If you have a passion for serving children or know someone who does, Please consider applying to be a part of a great team that works together in common purpose on behalf of our kids and our community. Eight point lead Beaver Dam at the break, 34-26 Golden Beavers on top of the Panthers. Let's look at the individual scoring from the first half. Beaver Dam was paced by Parker Stobie. He had 11 points, including a pair of three point baskets. JT Call with eight, including one from downtown. And Jack Jens had eight. He had a pair of triples, did J squared. Three points for Jeff Freund. Jeffrey with a three ball in the first half. Two points for Cameron Mendoza. And two more for EJ Salatel. On the Oregon side of the ledger, Vaughn Carvala with 14 points. He leads all scorers in the game right now. 14 for him, including one three-pointer and also including one two-handed dunk. Five points for Nolan Erferth, including a triple that he hit. Three points for Grant Wolink in the first half. Ryan Dins and Caden Diaz, two points each for the Panthers. And you talk about a game of runs. I mean, Beaver Dam was down double digits early after Oregon had used a 15-0 run to build a cushion. Beaver Dam then with a run of its own to get back into it. And Beaver Dam actually closed the half, outscoring them 15-7 after this game was tied at 19 midway through. So crazy stuff, but a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere, folks. This game is far from over. Both teams showed that they are very capable of scoring in bunches, scoring in a hurry, going on runs. So it ought to be a very entertaining second half. I mentioned it's a huge game for the conference uh, standings and also a seating game. It's a big game for seating purposes. Let's do this. We'll take another three-minute break, three-minute break, and back after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. 
Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Cheer! Now, cheer louder! Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you are in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you. Now, second half getting underway here inside the field house. Mike Tronson, Aiden Voigt, Jack Wilski as Beaverdam inbounds to start the second half, leading 34 26. For those of you listening on radio, Beaverdam moving left to right as I see it in the second half and a layup. JT Call took a pass, got behind the defense, and goes in on the right side for an uncontested layup. 36 26. BD on top by 10, opening few seconds of this second half. As I mentioned, Beaverdam left to right, and that means Oregon moving right to left to cross your radio dial or your daily Dodge TV video screen in the second half. This is Diaz pushing it over to the left side. Wolink takes a pass there from Erfurth. Wolink guarded heavily by Call. One hands it cross court. Three ball, no good for Erfurth it saves the long Karen from going out of bounds. They go back to Wolink. He'll try a three near side and buries it. Grant Wolink from downtown. 36-29 gets the Panthers to within seven. Minute and five seconds gone by here in the second half. Cameron Mendoza. Leaving it off for call. He'll try a three. Why not? It's off the rim. No good. And the rebound for Kreckman. Here's Kreckman out the other end. Beaverdam's in man-to-man -man defense. This is a pass left side, Erfurth to Carvalho. Kicked it right out of the block as he was being hassled by a couple of defenders. Now takes a return feed. He'll try a three, and he buries it. Carvalho from the left corner, knocking down a trifecta. And we've got a four-point game. It's a 6-0 run to start the half. I beg your pardon, a, uh, well, 6-0 run since that bucket by call. Carvalho just blocked calls. He fell down out of bounds, but the ball's going to stay on that end with the Golden Beavers. My goodness. Yeah, call got the first bucket of the half, and now a little 6-0 run. It's a four-point game. Off the inbounds play. Three ball off the rim. No good for Stoke. Oh, and it goes in anyways. It bounced off the rim. Looked like it was going to be no good, and it dropped back in. How about that? 39-32, Beaverdam by seven. 15.50 to go in the half, and there's a shot up, no good. Rebound, Stovey back the other way, finds Salatel. Out to Mendoza, Mendoza between the rings. 
Feeds Jens high on the right. He's guarded by Kreckman. And now back to Stoby, to the top of the key. Going against Diaz, kicks it out right side. Call, cross court feed Jens, faking a three ball. Now Call takes it and gives it right back to Stoby. Patient offense here for Beaver Dam. Oregon's in man-to-man -man defense. Call into the lane, right side, blocked by Carvala. The ball went out of bounds. Beaver Dam's going to keep it, but Carvala. I don't have the stats for the blocks, but he's had several. He's had several blocks, altered some shots, and he can do that with that wingspan. Here's Mendoza off the inbounds feed. Jens, pump fake, back to Call. Call off a screen, dancing right side. Got bumped, but maintains possession. We're about three minutes into the half. Mendoza, top of the key. Three balls off the back rim. No, and Carvala gets the rebound, and he's then tied up by JT Call. Reached in and tied him up. Now the arrow says it belongs to the Panthers, but what a... What a great effort defensively. They're going for that rebound, actually, for Call to tie him up. So the Panthers will retain possession. And here comes Diaz throwing it across the timeline over to Wolank. Pass was tipped by Call right to Mendoza. It's a, a turnover for the Panthers. Here is Call underhanding it. Salatel over to Jens, looking to the up baseline. Corralled one-handed style by Mendoza, and he wanted to drive towards the basket, but he couldn't handle it cleanly enough to do so. Now he's spinning into the block, sends it up top. Jens for three. Off the rim, no good. Carvala has the defensive board. 14-24 to go in the game. Here's a drive, and that is Erferth in for a layup on the left side. 39-34. The Beaver Dam lead is at five. We're about three minutes and 52 seconds into the second stanza. This is Jens out to call. Now to the corner. Mendoza quickly out of there. There's Jens again. Knocked out of his hands from behind. Ricochet goes right to Carvala. Throws it ahead. Kreckman. Kreckman layup. Got it. Defender back there trying to deny that. But now a timeout. Beaver Dam. It's a 30-second timeout. We will keep it right here with 1347 left to play in this second half. A reminder that uh, we've got more Beaverdam boys basketball on the air for you this coming Saturday night, weather permitting. This Saturday night, the 13th, the Beaverdam boys are scheduled to play at Wapan. And that'll be a Daily Dodge TV video stream on Saturday night. Pre-game show at 7 o'clock, tip at 7.15. But stay tuned because we'll see if that one actually happens. The, the weather is maybe still going to be a little iffy by the time we get to uh, Saturday night. But if it happens, Daily Dodge TV will be there. And that'll be a fun non-conference game, renewing that rivalry with the Wapan Warriors. All right, back to live action here. It's 39-36 after all that. So a one possession game. And Blank just got tied up by Erferth. This time the arrow says it stays on, on the Beaver Dam side of things, but what did I say earlier? Don't go anywhere, folks. Gonna be an entertaining second half. Still anybody's game? Here is Blank. On the baseline, pass tipped out by Carvala. Uh, you, it's tough to get something by that guy because he's got a. We talked about the big wingspan, and he, he's altering shots, altering passes. My goodness! All right, this is Mendoza. He's inside the free throw line. Underhands it out to Call. Call into the lane himself, kicks it back out. Now Mendoza over to Calls. They play catch. Cam sets the screen. They go to Blank. Blank out to Mendoza left corner. He's going to shoot a three. It's off the rim short. A rebound for Erferth. Here comes Carvala for three, and it's no good. Actually, it might have been a long two. I think he touched the his foot touched the line, but he didn't make it. And now the Beavers have it, leading by three. All right, Parker Stoby to the top of the key for Mendoza. Right side, there's JT. Fires it back to Stoby. 
Spins inside the free throw line. Shot is up. Shot is short. Might have been partially tipped. Rebound for Kreckman, and he'll trot ahead across the midcourt stripe. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the game. 39-36. Beaverdam leads Oregon. All right, there is a three ball, and it's no good for Wolling from the left corner. Rebound picked up by Jeff Freund, who's back out there now for the Golden Beavers. Call deep three off the rim, no good. Rebound, Blank tipped it to Freund. Erfer thought he was going to have it easily, and no, he didn't. That's a great hustle. Blank had it knocked out of his hands, but he corrals it once again. A little more than six minutes in to this second half. 39-36. Beaverdam with a three-point lead and possession. Here's Mendoza going against Wolink. Shot is up. Halfway down. Pop back out. And Grant Wolink with a rebound. Now here's Carvela giving it to Diaz. Fires it down low. Wolink off the glass from the right doorstep. Scores. 39-38. One point lead for Beaver Dam. 11 minutes and change left to go in the game. This is Mendoza up near the center circle. Giving it to Parker Blank. Blank driving to the far side. Hassled. Ball was, he lost the ball but saved by Stobie. Back to Blank. He'll try a three. It's no good. Stobie. Got the carom. Tried to go back to Blank. It, it went off somebody's shoe and right to call who fires to Blank in the corner. He missed a three ball. Carvalho the rebound. Carvalho ahead. Flips it to the baseline. Diaz blocked by call. Ball is loose. Still loose. Out of bounds it goes and it's going to go back to the Golden Beavers. It was bouncing around like a pinball. And Beaver Dam's going to get it back with 10-38 left in this ball game. Again, if you want to send an email before the end of the game, you can do so. Sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. Put basketball in the subject line. Send me your name and all the details, where you're from, what you're doing tonight. Probably getting ready for a storm. Who you're cheering for. Hopefully your snowblowers all start tomorrow. 39-38, Beaverdam by one. As we approach the 10-minute mark and counting of the second half, drive down a little call, ran into a, the defender, Carvela, kicks it back out, Salatel up top. He had just checked back in. Now a three on the wing. It is good! GT call! He picks up a tray there, 42-38, four-point Beaverdam lead. And we played now just a little more than eight minutes of this second half. All right, Carvela, triple team, kicks it out. Kreckman to the corner, Diaz for three, yes! Caden Diaz knocking down a triple. Timeout with 9.43 to go in the game. 42-41, Beaverdam leads Oregon. Back in one minute, back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV, 14.30 ESPN. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care in Beaverdam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. We have 9.43 to go in this ball game. Off the timeout, Beaverdam inbounding. Bringing it up the floor, their lead is at 1. 42-41, Beaverdam on top of Oregon. 
And a spin move in the right block. Salatel puts a shot up and scores. E.J. Salatel, four points in this one for him. And Carvalho took a pass down low at the other end. And there was a foul called. This is uh, Jeff Freund picking up his third, team's first of the half. Carvalho off the inbound speed, baseline jumper. It is pure. Vaughn Carvalho now with 19 points, 44-43. So the Beaver Dam lead at one. And a one-handed shot, no good for Salatel. Rebound pulled down by Wolink. And a pass ahead intended for Carvalho, who wanted to go in for a dunk and it went off his fingertips. Now Jens for three at the other end. Yes! Jack Jens! That's his third triple of the game. He's up to 11 points. 47-43, Beaver Dam by four. 8.42 to go in the game. Three ball, Carvalho right side. Off the rim, it's no good. On the weak side, there's Blank to get the rebound for the Golden Beavers. Blank out to Salatel. Fires it up top. There's Jens. Jens with a little pump fake. He takes off now and goes in. Missed the layup with a right hand. Rebound, wallink has got it. Fires it ahead to Carvalho. He's going to go baseline underneath the basket to the corner. Dins for three. Yes! Ryan Dins. That's a triple. 47-46. Beaver Dam's lead is at one. We've got 8.04 to go in the game and a one-point contest. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going down to the wire, it would appear. Both of these teams want this game desperately. Up and under. Oh, what a move by Jens. Jack Jens. Now with 13, 49-46, Golden Beavers lead the Panthers. 7.40 and counting left in this game. Carvala double team. Up to Wolink. Now on the right side high up top is Diaz. He finds Carvala again. Fires it to the right wing side. Erferth down low. Wolink off the glass. Missed it. Rebound tip right back to him and he floats one up and in. Oh, he got a deflection. They ricocheted right back to him. 49-48. So the Beaver Dam lead is at one as we approach the seven minute mark and counting of the second half. Deep three for Cole. In and out. No good. Freund, the rebound, trying to save it from going out of bounds, but he threw it to Diaz. And now ahead, here comes Erferth, bounce pass, Dins, he'll try a three. Wait a minute, wait, wipe it off. He traveled. Ryan, and the shot went too. It went through the net, but it's not going to count. As we get some subs in with 6.52 left in the game. Hey, Natalie Jens checking in from Moorhead tonight. Cheering for Jack Jens and the Beavers, and uh, Natalie, Jack is having a game here. If you've been uh, listening or watching, i tell you what, he's got the three triples, and I've got him for 13 points. That's not too shabby. Natalie, hope you're doing well. Here's your brother at the line, kicks it out. Now he'll take a return feed to the top of the arc. How's the weather up in Moorhead, Minnesota? Natalie, we're going to get a lot of snow around here. Salatel for three. It's off the rim. No good. Rebound for Kreckman. Yeah, we're going to get a near near blizzard-like conditions around here tomorrow. 7 to 12 inches tomorrow into Saturday. Not looking forward to it. I'm not going to leave the house, I don't think, much this weekend (laughs) at all, maybe, tomorrow. 6-12 6-12 to go in this one. But, Natalie, great to hear from you. Thanks for the email, by the way. All right, this is Diaz looking down low. Pass was tipped by Mendoza, saved by Kreckman. Double team. Another pass tip, but right to Carvala. Carvala turns around. Off the glass. He missed the shot a little bit short. Mendoza the rebound. 5.53 to go in the ball game. 49-48, Beaver Dam leads by one. Pass to a cutting, Cole, layup, got it with the right hand. Jens with the helper, Cole with the bucket. 51-48, three-point lead, and there's a three ball, it's no good for Diaz, rebound, Stobie has it. 
Underhands it to Call. Ooh, Call almost traveled. Was able to keep the one foot down. That was close, though. Now Jens driving. Gives it to Salatel. Salatel backs up near the center circle. Taken off to the free line. Pull up. Jays on the way. It's off the rim. No good. And that rebound is pulled down. Wallink. And here's Kreckman at the other end. Clock running. Exactly five minutes to go in the game, and it's a three-point contest. 51-48, Beaverdam on top. Offensive foul on Oregon. And Beaverdam is going to get it back. Walling picked up the foul. Hey, he's got another email here. It says, way to go, Golden Beavers. So good to watch. Great teamwork. That's from Judy. Judy Bergeson from Beaverdam, JT's third cousin. Judy, thank you very much. Appreciate the email. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to sneak one in quickly before the end of the game, love to hear from you. Here is JT over to Mendoza. Out to Jens, fake to three. To the free throw line he goes. Now underhands it out to Stobie. Parker Stobie. Through a double team. Layup is good as he took it down low. And they called a foul. Was it after the basket? So Stobie scores. 53, I guess there was no foul though. 53-48. Beaver Dam on top. But now we got a timeout. Timeout called with 428 left. We'll take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV, 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Nightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Nightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends. And if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Four twenty-eight left in the ball game. Beaver Dam leading Oregon 53-48. Some score updates here. Uh, the Beaver Dam boys hockey team is leading De Pere 4-1 after two periods of play across the street at the Family Center. And the Beaver Dam wrestling team won its dual meet tonight 51-18 thanks to Beaver Dam High School Activities Director Ryan Gerber for checking in with those scores. All right, it's Oregon ball off the timeout. Three ball Dins, no good from the left side. Rebound for Cameron Mendoza. Just over four minutes left. Clock running. Beaver Dam's up five, 53-48. This has been a fun one tonight. Game of runs. Both teams have made runs in this game. Here's Stoby. The pass was deflected. It's loose, and Wallink's got it. Dins, I believe, deflected it, and Wallink grabbed the ricochet. Three ball, Carmela in and out. No good. It was halfway down. It spit back out, and Calls got the rebound. Talk about an unfriendly rim there. Now here's Mendoza looking into the lane. Call, touch pass, and as he was doing that little touch pass out to Jens, there was a foul called. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the JV game tonight. Beaver Dam was a winner over Oregon 49-40. In the JV2 game, Oregon with a 57-47 win over the Golden Beavers. Mendoza trying to tip to the end line, and he threw it back in, but right to Kreckman. Back the other way. Kreckman, uh, baseline himself, bounce pass, Dins left corner, three ball, in and out, no good. Kreckman trying to get the rebound on his stomach. It was grabbed by Beaver Dam player. I'm trying to see who that was. I couldn't see the number. It was uh, Stobie, I think, yeah. 
and he got timeout when he grabbed it. So Beaverdam got it and called timeout with 3.20 to go in this second half of play. The Beaverdam Unified School District, talented students and exceptional staff, our school communities have earned 27 Wisconsin School of Recognition Awards, four top ranking recognitions by U.S. News and World Reports, and three National Blue Ribbon Awards for excellence. The Beaverdam Unified School District, where small town connections and values meet big town resources and opportunities. Learn more about your child joining our BD fam by visiting our website at www.bdusd.org or schedule an appointment for a visit by calling 920-885-7300. My name is Mike Tronson. Thanks for being with us tonight on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Aiden Voigt is my videographer and engineer on site tonight for the Daily Dodge TV video stream. Jack Wilski back at the ESPN Beaverdam Studios on Bill McCullum Way, just a few blocks from here. Jack is engineering our radio simulcast tonight. Saturday night, weather permitting, Beaverdam boys basketball at Wapan. A big non-conference rivalry game, weather permitting, of course. And if that happens on Saturday night, you can watch it on Daily Dodge TV, 7 o'clock for the pregame show, tip time at 7.15 on Saturday night. But we'll wait and see if they get that one in. All right, 3.20 to go. Beaverdam's up 53-48. Here's a drive and Salatel shot, hung on the rim, bounced a few times and went through. Oh my. Everybody holding their breath, 55-48. Beaverdam by seven. Dins. Bounce pass. And corralled by Kreckman. He's into the lane. One-handed floater is good for Kreckman. 55 to 50. Beaver Dam lead at 5, 244 to go. Mendoza over to Stoby. Stoby just looking around, trotting to the near side, fires it over to Jens on the wing. Pass to a cutting call. Right side goes in for a layup. Nice cut by call. He takes it in and finishes with a right hand. 57 to 50. Beaverdam on top of Oregon, 221 and counting left in the game. And this is Kreckman to a cutting Carbola, and he couldn't get it to go. Jens the rebound. Here's Stoby. Triple teamed. Got it through a triple team to Jens. Clock running. Two minutes left in the game. Seven point Beaverdam lead. Trying to hang on and get this all-important conference win, and Kreckman fouled Mendoza. So Kreckman with the foul, Mendoza got bumped, and now there, there haven't been many fouls in this second half. That's only the third on Oregon, Beaver Dam with two, so nobody even near the bonus, and that's the thing, if you're Oregon, you got a bunch of, to give and Beaver Dam just called a timeout to save possession. And we'll take a one minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV, 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. It's getting late. A minute and 53 seconds left in the ballgame. 
57 to 50. Beaver Dam leads Oregon, and the Golden Beavers inbounding off the timeout. Salatel, and actually the pass intended for EJ, was knocked out by Erfurth. So Beaver Dam will have to do it again. This time, Jens to Stoby. And Stoby through a double team. Missed the layup, though, as he went wide open, and he just missed. Wallink the rebound, giving it now to Kreckman. Back to Wallink. Up top, Kreckman looking left side. Carbola for three. Yes. Vaughn Carbola, another triple. And it's now 57 53 with a buck 28 left as we had a scrum ensuing, and they called a foul on Oregon, Ryan Dins. His first, team's fourth. So, yeah, still several fouls to give here if you're Oregon. As I said, nobody even close to the bonus. Mendoza off the inbound speed, and he's fouled right away. That'll be the fifth foul. So one more to give before Beaverdam will start shooting. A buck 26 left, and it's a four-point game. Here's Jens off the inbound speed, full court pressure. Jens double team. He's in trouble. Oh, that was a double dribble. They didn't call it. And the Oregon fans saw it, but there was no call. I saw it too, folks. And here is a whistle at the other end. I think Beaver Dam got away with one there. And that foul was on Carbola, his first team sixth. And another, oh, he had an offensive foul on Beaver Dam. Stoby before the ball was even inbounded. So this is going to be interesting here. Now a minute 17 left to play in the ball game. 57-53, Beaver Dam leads, but Oregon now will inbound. A chance to gut the deficit down to two or less on this possession. Pass to a cutting Carvala, missed the shot, got his own rebound, put back no. Crackman the offensive board, lost it on the way down. Mendoza's got it and feeds JT Call. Call now through traffic, gets tripped up. Hits the deck with 59.8 seconds left in this one. Woo! Wow. So Kreckman picked up the foul, his third, and that is the seventh team foul. So shooting the bonus is JT Call. With 59.8 seconds left, and he missed the front end of the bonus. Leaping to get the rebound was Walling. Throws it ahead. Diaz to Dins for three. Off the rim, it's no good. Mendoza got the rebound. They throw it ahead. Salatel going to go in uncontested. Layup is good for EJ as he falls down out of bounds. 59-53. Six-point Beaver Dam lead. 40 seconds left. Here is Crackman on the left doorstep. Scores. Puts it off the glass and a timeout called immediately after the bucket. 30-second timeout, Oregon. With 38, point, 38 seconds left in this ball game, 59-55. Now this is about as entertaining as it gets. So this is two good teams really fighting tooth and nail here in this one. You know, I mentioned this, you know, Oregon really has picked it up after dropping the first couple of games of the season. The, uh, the Panthers have really played well pretty much ever since the beginning of December. They've had a couple of losses along the way, but other than that, they've uh, they've been enjoying pretty good success. Beaver Dam has played well, too. I mentioned that big win over Manitowoc on Saturday that broke a two-game losing streak. Prior to that, they had won three in a row. So these are two teams that, you know, we talked about. They have thoughts of, you know, being in the, in the talk for a conference title, and that's why this game is so meaningful because these teams want to remain with just two conference losses and stay one game behind Wanakee. Here's Cole, five-second count. He couldn't get it in. And Beaverdam apparently did not get a timeout, so that's going to give it to Oregon. They're down four, 38 seconds left. Oregon's going to get it back. They get it in. Here's Carvala. Lob pass up. Kreckman. A three ball for Diaz. Oh, he hits it. Diaz 
with a triple, 59-58. Beaverdam leads by one, 22 seconds left, and we've got a foul as they were getting the ball up the floor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Diaz, ice water in his veins, and now calls it the free throw line at the other end. Foul was on Diaz, his second. Front end of the bonus is good. That's a big free throw for JT Call. 60 to 58. Now, if he makes this one, it's still a one possession game. 22.3 to play. Second free throw. Good. 61 to 58. Beaverdam leads Oregon by three. 22.3 seconds to go. Here we go. Kreckman. Guarded by Mendoza. Ball to Carvala and foul on that Jens there. Yes. Jay Squared picking up a foul. And for Beaver Dan, that's just their fourth. And now a timeout called by Oregon. Timeout Oregon with 14.8 seconds remaining in this ball game. It is 61 to 58. Beaver Dam on top. Beaver Dam, as I mentioned, their next game, weather permitting, is this Saturday night at Waupon. They've also got a game scheduled Monday night, non-conference game at Adams Friendship, which would be a uh, 7 o'clock tip up at Adams Friendship High School. Of course, the Badger Challenge is next weekend for the Golden Beavers. Meanwhile, looking at uh, Oregon's upcoming schedule, weather permitting this Saturday night, they're supposed to host Greenfield. And then as I mentioned, you've got the uh, Badger Challenge coming up next weekend. And uh, the Badger Challenge being hosted by Oregon. At least the boys' end of it. The girls' Badger Challenge this year is at Mount Horeb this weekend. They've already canceled, I believe, the games for tomorrow night. We'll see what happens on Saturday. 14.8 left. They get it into Carvala, do the Panthers, and an immediate foul. That's Jens. That's only the fifth, so they got one more to give. And This is Diaz to throw it in, 13.2 to play. Carvala, touch pass, Diaz to the corner. Three ball, Wolink in the tie. It's no good, too strong. Rebound call, and he's... Fouled by Kreckman with 7.7 seconds left. Everybody held their breath when that three was launched. 61-58. Beaver Dam by three. And JT Call is going back to the free throw line to try and ice this one. It's the bonus. Front end of the bonus. No good. Rebound. Knocked around. Oregon fighting for it. Grabbed by Diaz on his back. He traveled with 2.9 to play as he rolled over. And Beaverdam's going to get it. 2.9 seconds left, leading by three. Oh, wow. You know, Beaverdam's going to inbound on the baseline to our right. 2.9 seconds left, leading by three. Call gets it in, and an immediate foul by Dins. Now down to 1.9 seconds left. Oregon's out of timeouts. So Stoby goes to the line, and again, trying to basically ice this one with even one free throw. It's a two-possession game. And it's up and good. There it is. Stoby. 62-58. Golden Beavers lead the Panthers. And one more. And eyes it up. It is good. 63-58 Beaver Dam. And this one is going to be in the books. Dins takes the inbound speed. Long shot. Missed it off the backboard. And the Golden Beavers with an impressive win tonight. What a battle this was by these two teams. And Beaver Dam gets the victory. Final score, the Golden Beavers, 
63. And the Panthers, 58. Wow, what a ball game. Tell you what we'll do. We're going to take a timeout. We're going to take a four-minute break. A four-minute break. Then we're going to come back for our post-game show. We'll give you some final numbers. We'll get head coach Tim Ladrin up here, and we'll get his thoughts on this one as well. We're back in four minutes on 1430 ESPN, Beaver Dam, and Daily Dodge TV. At Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to earn our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care in Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Cheer! Now, cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Welcome back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson with you on the post-game show. Final score tonight in this Badger Large Boys Basketball Tilt. Beaver Dam gets the win over Oregon. It was the Golden Beavers 63 and the Panthers 
58. We'll have Beaver Dam head coach Tim Ladrin up here in a little bit for some comments on this one. Wow, what a what a fun game this was. Two really good teams going at it, and uh, Beaver Dam, after trailing early by double digits, comes back and uh, wins by five. Now, let's run down the final individual scoring from this one. Now, my stats are unofficial, but uh, they should be pretty accurate. For the Golden Beavers, they were led by J.T. Call, 19 points. 11 of those came in the second half. He had a couple of triples along the way, and he goes for 19. Parker Stolby right behind him with 18 points, including three triples in this one. And also in double figures, Jack Jens. What a game for J squared. He had 13 points, and I have him for three triples in this one. E.J. Salatel with eight for the Golden Beavers. It was Jeff Freund with a triple. He finished with three. Cam Ron Mendoza with two to round out the scoring for the Golden Beavers. Now on the Oregon side, Vaughn Carvala, 22 points. He led all scores in the game. And unfortunately, it comes on the short end tonight, but Carvala goes for 22. 14 in the first half, eight more in the second half, and he had three triples. Grant Wallink was in double figures with 10, including one from behind the arc. Caden Diaz, good for eight. He had a pair of triples in the second half. Seven points for Nolan Erferth. Five of those came before halftime. And it was Henry Kreckman with six tonight for Oregon. Rounding out the scoring, Ryan Dins had five, including one from downtown. With the loss, Oregon drops to seven and five on the year and three and three in the Badger large. Meanwhile, Beaver Dam now 10 and three overall. And the Golden Beavers sit at five and two in the conference. I had mentioned, you know, coming into the night, as far as the conference standings go, Wana Key with a five and one mark there in first place. But you had that log jam of teams right behind Wana Key. Monona Grove, Beaver Dam, Milton, and Oregon all with two losses in conference. Well, Beaver Dam still only the two losses. So, you know, they wanted to come in and get this desperately. So did Oregon. I mean, you want to stay close to Wana Key if you want to be in the talk for a conference title. And Beaver Dam with a, well, what a win that was for them tonight by the score of 63 to 58. But uh, Beaver Dam still now, you know, at worst, you know, is going to remain tied for second place just a game back of first place Wana Key. Uh, still waiting for head coach uh, Tim Ladron to get up here. Um, I see he's talking with uh, he's talking with Mark Miller, the uh, boys basketball writer for Wisports.net, who was in the house tonight. And so uh, you know what? Hey, I admit it. Mark Miller takes precedence over Mike Tronson. He does. So uh, he should be up here in a second. Uh, Want to thank again our sponsors that make this broadcast possible. Our presenting video sponsors are Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, and White Construction. And I see Tim Ladrin making his way up to the broadcast area right now. Here he comes. I, uh, Tim, I, I just told the audience that I understand Mark Miller takes precedence over Mike Trance, and I get it. I'm, no worries there. Take your time, buddy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's uh, get a headset on Coach Ladrin here and uh, – Come on up and take a load off here, Coach. Uh, yeah, I think my, uh, my 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 new knee took a little beating tonight. <laughs> It'd get pretty animated there to get our guys going. Well, I tell you, uh, that was uh, that was a heck of a game. I, I tell you what, that was, you know, you called it. You said this has the potential to be a really entertaining game, and it, it was. And, boy, I probably, probably weren't feeling so good early on when you were down double digits, but uh, – Boy, once you uh, once you got back into it, there it was. Uh, it was just back and forth all night long. Yeah, down seventeen to three. <laughs> um, you know, I just for whatever reason tonight, we just didn't have the same grind of the first five minutes I thought than we normally have. And um, 
but they knew it. We called timeout. And that's kind of what I told them. I said, what are, it's not the same energy. Yeah. And, and with this group, because of their experience and how good our leadership is, there wasn't much else I had to say there. They, they knew it. <laughs> how many teams in the state of Wisconsin down 17-3 early fold their tent and go home, you know, and, and end up losing that game by 35? I know I've coached some teams that would have done that too, right? Um, this group doesn't. And I told them at halftime, this is why I love coaching these guys. They're, they have an incredible heart. And, but and the other thing you said was we're far from done <laughs> at halftime. Uh, it's a really good team. And I think, I think Coach Siebert is the best coach in the conference. I, I, he, I, he's really good with what he does. Um, they're really well taught. Um, and they got a great team. And, I, you know, I thought, you know, we, we had to earn every bit of it. Yes, you did, and uh, you know you mentioned you know I've talked about this in the past about how I you know this team has a lot of heart and they they, they never give up. And you're right. I mean, it would have been easy at 17 three. Well, let's mail it in. Yep. And I, and I, the game's over. Um, but your guys, and that's one thing I've seen over the last you know how many seasons here is they they they, they just don't give up. And you know we we talked to you and I in the pregame about how for the most part they don't get too high or too low. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of panic there when it was 17-3. to three. Yep. I don't know if you did, but on nope. the bench, I didn't see it. No, and that's probably why we, you know, were able to come back the way we did. You know, our our guys uh, battled and, and did, did some nice things. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, our guys have, uh, I'm just really proud of them not giving way. You know, they, they, they didn't panic. They showed a ton of fight. And you know that's that's what it, that's what happens. You know when you, when you don't give up and you give yourself a chance. And we had to give ourselves a chance. And obviously we made that big run in the first at the end of the first half to take a pretty solid lead going into halftime. And but we had to hang in there, and we did. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you know, talk about the defensive effort here. I mean, now Carbola got his points. You know, he got mm-hmm. 22. Mm-hmm. But were you happy with the defensive effort overall? Oh yeah. I mean, he's gonna get what he gets. I mean, he's such a good player and he's such a good athlete. It's a tough matchup for us, especially with 6'6 and the way he jumps. Um, but, you know, it, it starts with Jack and then Jeffrey. We're both really, really good on him. And, they, and you just kind of make him work for stuff, you know. You just kind of make him work as hard as he can to, to get what he gets. And and then, you know, hope somebody else doesn't really go off on us. And um, and I thought we did a great job in help. And we understood where we needed to be. Um, and, and, you know, just trying to make him work for everything he had. And um, he's a great player. <laughs> And, yeah, he's, a, he's an absolute handful. Remember that conversation you and I had tonight earlier about role players and guys stepping up all over the place? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was on display again tonight. We talked a little bit last game about how I thought Jeff Freund was outstanding. Tonight, Freund, we again played some quality minutes, but I tell you what, Jack Jens was outstanding. Yep. Offensively, the three triples, 13 points. Cameron Mendoza down there doing some dirty work and getting rebounds and, yep. and playing his defense. Again, we're so key for you in this one. Yeah, Jack was huge. And then offensively, it was huge, too. Um, you know, he hit a couple big threes and, um, you know, just offensively did, did a lot of good things for us. And then obviously on the defensive end, um, he had a pretty tough assignment. And he just, yeah. you know, he just – he doesn't matter how tired he is. He just plays a hundred thousand percent. Like he just—it's incredible how how much energy he has and he's physical and and uh, did everything he could to help us out. Well, we talked about how this is a huge game as far as as conference goes because they all are. I get mm-hmm. that, but you also mentioned and reminded me—you know, this is a seeding game too. And so all these wins are going to help you, you know, come come that time here in the not too distant future. Yeah, because that because that's a team that's going to win a lot of games. Yeah, and I mean they're really good. And uh, and they're only getting better. I mean, they're they're rolling right now. I mean, they, you know, Sussex Hamilton they just lost them I think, by four. Yeah, you know, and they're ranked in the top, you know, in the top ten in Division One, and um, you know, just you know, a really really good team. And we, you know, happy with the win and you know, move on. Well, weather permitting, Saturday night you're going to go up to Wapan, yep. and uh, hopefully that game will happen. We'll have to kind of wait and see what old Mother Nature does over the next. Uh, yeah. 24 to 48 hours, but uh, yeah. uh, renewing the rivalry with the Warriors, mm-hmm. and uh, boy, what are, you, what are your early thoughts on that one? Hopefully it happens. Yeah, I mean, really athletic team. You know, uh, they could score in a bunch of ways, and, um, you know, they play fast and athletic, and 
um, you know, it's going to be a good challenge. I mean, it's, you know, it's always a good game, and going down there is going to be a challenge. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, offensively, they've learned a lot over the last few years, um, and they're really good offensively. And, and then and defensively, they grind away, you know. So um, that's a good team. Yeah, we're going to have to we're gonna have to grind away on them. Looking forward to uh, that one. And then, of course, uh, next week you would have the uh – the Badger Challenge, and yep. now you don't know who you're going to play yet, or but yep. that's uh, that's at Oregon, correct? Uh, yeah, it's, week, yeah, it's at Oregon, and it's going to be. Um, it, it's we'll find out tomorrow. We know we now play on Saturday mid afternoon. It depends okay. how some of the games go, but it looks like a, a four o'clock or like a six o'clock game on Saturday night. Um, and then, like you said, we'll find out after the results tonight on who we play. And I missed, you, you still have the Monday night game uh, next week, right, at Adam's Friendship. And uh, yep. uh, I, haven't, I haven't been up there in a long time myself, but uh, that'll be interesting, a uh, yep. place you don't go all the time. No, it's a return date from last year. And, okay. um, you know, so a Monday night going up there after a busy week. And, and But, you know, it, that's the way the schedule goes. And, and, you know, there's always things that are not, you know, ideal in the schedule world, but you got to deal with it. And so... Uh, our guys will be ready to go, but we got to take care of Wapan first. Well, tomorrow, a snow day again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, no practice, but, yeah. uh, well, I mean, my goodness. Uh, hopefully, again, we get that game in on uh, on Saturday. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I told the guys, you know, we didn't have a great practice yesterday. Um, this snow day the day before. I mean, you know, high school kids, are clocks get goofy when things get out of whack. <laughs> could could so, that have maybe attributed to the first couple minutes of the game, maybe the slow start? I mean, start I don't know. I think they, maybe it could be, but I mean, they got the same thing, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, could be, but yeah, we were just we were not super dialed in yesterday. Uh, for first time, like, I mean, we, we're all, our practices have been great. I've told you that. Yesterday, just kind of a little, little off. Not not terrible, but just yeah. a little off. And, um, you know, so it just throws a wrinkle in kind of your rhythm. But, yeah, we just have to deal with it. Well, it was still a heck of a win tonight for you guys. Uh, fun game to, to broadcast. Maybe a little too close at times for yeah. you on the bench, but it was uh, enjoyable. And hats off to you and the boys. Thanks. Congratulations on the win, and uh, let's hope we see you on Saturday night. Hope, hope that game gets in. Yep, sounds good, Mike. Thanks good to see you. It. Thanks, Tim. Yep, thank you. All right, Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining me on the post game show. Again, Beaver Dam a winner tonight in Badger Large Conference boys basketball by the score of 63 to 58. So that is going to pretty much wrap up our broadcast here. Again, a reminder that. If it happens, weather permitting, Saturday night, you can tune in to Daily Dodge TV for the Beaver Dam Boys at Waupon, 7 o'clock pregame show, and the tip time at 7.15. So, uh, you know, plan on doing that if you uh, can't make it out to Waupon. And I tell you what, folks, uh, from the bottom of my heart, please be safe over the next 24 to 48 hours. If you don't have to go out in that snow tomorrow and or Saturday, early especially, don't do it. Be safe if you have to be out there on the roads. Slow down. You know the drill. And uh, we want to see you all in the gym here very soon. And uh, just be careful because it's going to be it's going to get a little interesting uh, starting tomorrow morning. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. Want to thank all of you for being with us. As always, want to thank uh, Jack Wilski back at the 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Studios for engineering our radio portion tonight. And Aiden Voigt here, Agent AA Voigt, thank you very much for being my videographer and engineer on the Daily Dodge TV screen for Jack and for Aiden. My name is Mike Tronson saying so long from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Have a pleasant evening and be safe in that snow. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN.